All right, y'all, we are at the detail shop, so let me show you what we got going on, man. So, it's the caravan, as y'all know. Welcome back. All right, y'all, it's got another day, another dollar, and it is time to get to it, man. So, you know where we are. I hope so. You on Chuck's Daily Hustle, man. Make sure you like, and you gotta comment, and you gotta subscribe. You gotta smash that notification bell right next to the subscribe button. That way you can stay up to date with what I have going on. That way you can see me run around like a chicken with his head cut off and show you how to get to the money. And then we can talk and have a little fun as well, man. But um, I'm driving right now, y'all, trying to get to this destination. I'm in the 09 uh, Dodge Grand Caravan, and I am loving this ride, man. I'm not going to lie to you. I have, well, I'm not going to drive this truck for probably until I sell this joint. I'm not going to lie to you because it's got... It's good on gas, man. It's got all the room that I need. So a uh, van is the way to go, man. But anyways, man, I want to give y'all the update before we get to our destination, wherever that may be. Um, Acro TL. So the reason why it was shaking was because it needed a left front upper control arm. So we got that taken care of. That thing was expensive, y'all. $160 control arm. Um, but, you know, I got the plug plug on top of the plug plug so um i got it for about like 110 so i was happy about that um even though i was sad and then all, everybody in here was wrong when they, we talking about the cooling leak y'all so um well we didn't say it was i didn't say it was a cooling leak but it ended up being a cooling leak so um it ended up being a radiator so a lot better than a lot of things you guys were saying um that it could be so i'm happy about that it wasn't a um air pocket in the cooling system and it, the coolant wasn't i mean it was a little bit low so i forgot who commented that but so you were partially correct um but yeah it wasn't that y'all but anyways man what we finna do what we are finna do today man i'm getting ready to run out to Mannheim. i found a couple cars on my list or i made a list last night and i found a couple cars that i liked um so i'm gonna go out there check those out hopefully we can get some good deals um, or at least these cars are actually decent and then tomorrow obviously we'll find out if there's some deals or not um, So I'm gonna add a little couple a couple cars to my inventory then I'm gonna chill out. So that's gonna be the plan um, It's a little cold out today. So I don't know if I'm gonna be doing a um, auction walk around video with y'all or not uh, But if I do then great then we can uh, show you guys the inventory and all that good stuff uh, But it is a little difficult in this cold weather y'all so I can't make it I'm not gonna freeze my butt off for no auction walk around videos when we got to get to this money so um and uh i know i don't sound all chippery but i'm chippery in the inside y'all and that's where it counts seriously no nah, <laughs> but uh, i'm gonna see y'all in a second let's get it let's go all right y'all another crazy story man so a lot of dudes gonna be able to relate to this a lot of newcomers y'all need to listen to this and everybody that's thinking about becoming a dealer you need to listen to this so um I did a buy here, pay here deal, man. Did a buy here, pay here deal. A customer, a repeat customer referred her to me, all right? Now, she came, and that's her niece, his niece, actually. And uh, they came out, both of them, actually, and they bought the car. Now, she only owed 250 after the deal was done, which is fine, you know what I mean? Now, a lot of people ask me, how do I structure buy here, pay here deals, blah, 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 right? So, this one was a little bit of special circumstance because I had done buy here, pay here deals with the uncle already. And um, he was very rapid with me. He's done two cars and he paid them off faster than he should have. So he came out with the niece and she only owed 250 after she paid the car. Now, well, I mean, paid the portion of the car, right? Um, so I told him, hey man, you know, it's, you're not going on the title, but your niece is because obviously she was the one buying the car and that's the way they wanted to do it. It was just a referral. So I said, I didn't want to do a buy her pay here deal on her because she didn't have a job at that time. She was on her way to getting a job. You know what I'm saying? So it was kind of a favor, also kind of a, hey, you know, I'm, she's only gonna owe me 250, I already made my money, blah, 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 blah. But as you know, we're gonna structure this deal, it's a buy her pay here deal and put this lien on this, on this vehicle. That way, just in case you do, do anything crazy, I can repossess my car. Now, I didn't really care about the 250, but principles and also um, just waiting on a girl to, you know, give me a call. I mean, obviously we always know that 
people are going to call you when you got these liens on these cars and they try to sell them or they try to do something with the car and they need the lien release, right? So I finally just got this call two months after the fact. Now, this girl, let me not say that. I actually talked to her about a week, week and a half ago. And um, I explained to her, hey, we need our money if you want us to release the lien. Okay, I'll come up with the money as soon as possible. I, I should have it by next week, fine. Call me this morning. Now all of a sudden she forgot everything that happened. She didn't never uh, do the agreement. That was an agreement between us and her uncle on her car. And she's gonna sue us and she, and she needs the lien release. Well, great. I'll see you in court. And you know what? Technically you on repossession, on the repossession list. So just so you just so you know that. Man, she got heated. Mad, mad, mad. And so now, um, you know, she hung up angrily, but we'll see what happens, man. I'm gonna keep y'all updated with that. See if we get our 250. Uh see if we end up repossessing the car, see if she do something crazy. Let's see what these guys got going on. Looks like they just got a couple of cars. Let's see. You know, you the wrong seat, man. One of y'all driving, homie. Shit. One of y'all driving, man. I'm about to eat. What's up, man? You got a charger in here? Nah, I don't. Damn. What you got, man? What's this? Hey, get what year is this, man? 2002, man. 2002 what, man? Yeah. What year is this, man? 06. 06, man. Chevy Impala, man. You left your Newports in there, man. But yeah. We at Bryant's, man. I just kind of randomly just threw, threw them up in there, didn't I? I didn't even tell y'all where we was going, man, because I didn't know. But yeah, man, I'm at the, uh, we're picking up some cars from the, I mean, no, they're dropping some cars off. They just won some, some from, uh, what's the name? Huh? Uh, some rice. Yeah, I like rice, y'all. Y'all ain't know. I like everything. Y'all know, know I be like eating it. all the time. I know you like rice. <laughs> Looking, boy. This nigga like fufu. <laughs> That nigga like foo-foo. <laughs> Alright, man. Back to the lonely Chuck in the car, man. Chuck in the minivan. Nah. Man, um, so yeah, I just dropped them off, y'all. Now I'm getting ready to run to this post office. Gotta drop these plates off, man. Four cars have been sold. And um, I gotta get these plates to these customers. And then I need to also go finish up some paperwork, man. So I'm about to go chill out for a little second until this phone ring, man. Hopefully something else pops off. Um, you know, hopefully we get some money, man, because, you know, we most definitely need that. You know, um, let me know how y'all feeling about these vlogs, man. Let me getting back into the game. Um, I know a lot of y'all appreciate it. And then, like I said, man, I appreciate y'all appreciate me. That's all I can say, man. But I'm going to see y'all in a second. Um, let's get to where we got to go and let's make some moves. We are back, y'all. So day two, man. We're gonna make this a two-day vlog. I completely forgot to end the video. I forgot to shoot and all that stuff. So we y'all might may have missed a little bit, but it is what it is, man. Uh we'll figure out what was missed uh, later on, man. But um either way it goes, man. I'm back in the minivan. And yes, I'm loving this joint, man. So compared to the compared to the uh the Tahoe, look at that gas gauge, man. That's not even at three-fourths yet. You know what I'm saying? And I've been rolling. So usually I put about like twenty five, about twenty five dollars a day in my uh, my Tahoe, man, when I'm driving it. And um, I haven't had to fill this joint up. So this is probably about like seven dollars worth of gas. So I can't beat it, man. So like I said, man, I might end up keeping this joint. Who knows? Um, or finding something to replace it because somebody just hit me up for it. Um, it's actually a, a family member's referral. So. Who knows, man? But enough with all that, man. Um, I am gonna be bidding at Mannheim later on, uh, probably about 20 minutes, man. And hopefully we get some cars. So I found a couple cars after I got off um, of the dealer auction walk around video uh, from yesterday. So I'm gonna drop that one before, the dealer auction walk around video from Mannheim, I'm gonna drop that before here. So before I drop this video, so make sure y'all go check out that video. That way you can see what I found. Um, so I'm gonna be bidding on that stuff um, today, and then hopefully we get, you know, a couple of them, and then we can make some blue faces. But for now, let's just cut this short, and then I'll see y'all in a second with the results on uh, what's going on with Manhunt, or if something interesting happened before. Then you know I'm gonna get you. All 
right, y'all, rolling in the Acura. I've been in here for about an hour now, and we are good to go. Um, no more of that uh, vibrating and all that crap. And then uh, the heat is most definitely working the way it's supposed to. So once again, recap, I think I said this yesterday, but I'm gonna say it again. Left front control, uh, left front control arm was the reason for the vibration when it was cold. And then uh, the radiator was the reason for the heat doing what it was doing and the temperature gauge going up and down. So everybody was wrong and nobody was right, man. <laughs> but uh, anyways, man, yeah, I'm cool with it, man. I'm rolling right now. I just looked at a um, potential property. So we rolling, man. Y'all see the, the scenery and uh, I'm enjoying myself right now. So this is kind of, this might be like my little piece right here, y'all. Just rolling, getting the job done. And when I go out farther and I see stuff I haven't seen yet, um, or go down different roads, that's just kind of my little inner peace time. But enough of all that. I sound real light skinned, don't I? But it's all good, man. I'm gonna see y'all at the next destination. Um, I got a couple things that I gotta do, supposedly. But y'all know how that is. Most definitely gotta get us some tacos or something. Man. I'm hungry as hell, so let's figure it out. Let's get it. All right, y'all, so I am in the 2012 Dodge Grand Caravan. I am, uh, well, I dropped off that Acura TL, man. I'm bringing this over to uh, White Chris's house right now, man, and I'm going to have him check out this front end for me one more time, man, because every time I move this car, it's making um, a front left noise, like the brakes are scraping or something. And the people that I brought it to before, they said that it was just the brakes, but we need to make sure that this is not going to have an issue with me pulling this car out from saving for like a month. You know what I'm saying? Because you never know when you're going to sell these cars. So I'd rather just knock this out. Let's just do some uh, what they call TLC. Um, and uh, let's just make sure that everything is properly done. So if you got to grease that side up, then that's what I need to do. Um, and if there's an issue, then I need to fix that, man, because this is a bigger ticket item. And uh, we're getting ready for tax season, man. So um, got, we got almost enough cars, but we need to get these all ready to go. All these, I just want to be able to basically pick up the phone and uh, pick up that uh, that instant messenger or whatever app that people call me from or hit me up off of and just be able to sell these cars and just be done with it. So um, we just doing some little, you know, like I said, man, some TLC, some tidying up with these uh, products that we got that we're gonna put on the uh, road. but. With all that talking, man, we're gonna go ahead and end the vlog just like that. I thought the day was over, but no, it's not, man. So um, I am actually on my way to the detail shop. I'm going to uh, wash this joint up. Man. I'm gonna have him uh, knock this out, man, because like this ain't, I can't sell this, man. This is the 09 Grand Caravan. And if I decide to keep it, I can't drive this car like this, man. You know, I gotta have some type of cleanliness going on. So I gotta get this uh, detail, man, and uh, they could be up to par, you know what I mean? So um, we don't wanna start uh, having no uh, wishy-washy product um, as, far as, we, as far as we came already. So you know, let's keep it uh, the way it should be. So I won't play around with these people. Plus I, I was looking at it today, man. Dude, I don't even know if y'all can see all that. I'm gonna try to get up close when we get out, uh, out to the shop, man. But uh, it's, I was looking, man, and the sun was hitting it, and then the, uh, the windows is all dirty, so you see all the fingerprints from these kids that they had um, in here, like whoever owned this car before, and I ain't feeling that. It's a lot of germs, man. It's a lot of COVID in this month, you know what I'm saying? So I gotta get that cleaned up. And then, uh, and I, yeah, I, must, I should've detailed it in the first place, man, because when I cleaned it out, it, I cleaned it out myself, but when I cleaned it out, I, uh, when I was doing like the stone and go seats and all that, there was a uh, like a whole bunch of McDonald's fries and stuff up in here, and uh, it was just real nasty. So I, I did clean it all myself and made it look better. I mean, it was presentable, you know. But um, like I said, I'm not shooting for really a presentable look. I'm trying to shoot for a really, really uh, nice, nice look, you know, like a retail look. So that's what I got to stick to, man. I got to keep my brand um, where it's at, man. So, um, anyways, man, let's get to the shop. Um, I'm going to show you guys uh, the car that I'm picking up and then also obviously I'm gonna show you No, I think you guys already saw this car, but whatever. I'm gonna show you both at the same damn time and we're gonna See what happens after that All right, y'all we are at the detail shop. So let me show you what we got going on, man. So 
It's the caravan, as y'all know. Matter of fact, let me get y'all to... See, this is why I want to keep this one, y'all. Because this one got the power, the power joints. And it's got the auto start and everything. So here's the interior, man. I'm going to get that looking a little better. And then uh, here is the view. So y'all, what this looks like. So I'm going to be driving at five speed, so I ain't going to be able to talk to y'all. Uh, I don't really like how that looks. I guess it was super filthy, though. So some cars you just can't take back and put them back to life all the way. But it is what it is. It looked 10 times better than what it was looking like. So I don't know why he got a five-speed five speed Saturn view. But whatever, man. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end the video like that, y'all. Appreciate y'all for tuning in, like always, like I said before. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.